This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the making process of my next coat project. I made myself a coat a few months ago out of a retro blanket and I enjoyed that project so much that as soon as I finished it, I already started making plans for my next coat project. I also live in Tasmania, which is the little island of Australia and it gets freezing cold here during winter and so I just feel like I need another coat in my life to make this miserably cold winter a little bit more bearable. The coat I'm going to be working on today is going to be a pink coat which I'm for some reason just so excited about. I don't often wear pink even though pink is one of my favourite colours. But when I saw this fabric in the fabric store I just was so drawn to it and the idea of having a pink coat is just so exciting to me and I think it's going to be such a fun addition to my wardrobe. And to make the coat I'm going to be pattern hacking the stacker jacket pattern by Papercut Patterns. Basically instead of just keeping it at a jacket length I have lengthened all the pattern pieces to be able to make quite a long jacket styled coat. And so yesterday afternoon I spent a good few hours cutting out all the pieces out of the fabric and the lining and today I'm going to just have a cozy sewing day stitching up my coat which honestly if you haven't made a coat before it is the ultimate form of self-care it's just I don't know there's something special about it so I'm really excited. So as you can see this is how I've kind of pattern hacked the pattern pieces I've just cut them along the length and shorten line and then I've lengthen them by 60 centimeters so if you wanted to do a similar pattern hack that's all you kind of have to do just cut them in half and then pop 60 centimeters worth of paper in between the two pieces and you should be good to go. I probably should have made a toil or twall whatever you call it where you do like a practice run first out of some other fabric but I just hate doing that it just seems really boring to me to have to make the same project twice so I'm kind of just hoping for the best that this pattern hack will work out as I hope. I do have a little bit of extra fabric so if there's a massive fail along the way I should be okay to cut out some pieces out of the leftover fabric. Also just look how cute the lining fabric is. It's this beautiful tablecloth that I cut into and I just think it's so fun and it's just going to give the coat a really cute pop of colour and pattern when you kind of open it up which I love. I love adding fun linings to my coats. I just think why add just a plain boring fabric when you can have something pretty like this. So for my coat, I've decided to keep the front flat pockets that are already part of the stacker jacket pattern. I've previously made the stacker jacket before and these front pockets just make the finished garment look so professional as they kind of like inset into the lining a little bit, which I just think is so satisfying to do. So to make these pockets, I place the pocket bag lining pieces onto the coat front pieces and then stitch them in place along the stitch line guide of the pattern. I found it easiest to stitch this part by cutting out the stitch line of the pattern piece and then simply using it as a template. Once stitched in place, I then cut into the corners, being very careful not to accidentally snip the stitches. And then I flip the pocket bag to the wrong side of the coat front. Which once pressed creates a perfect rectangle inset onto the coat front. Then to make the pocket, I fold the pocket bag in half and stitch it together along the sides. To make the flap that will cover the pocket, I place the two flap pieces together. For my coat, I've decided to make the underside of the flap the lining fabric. And then I stitch them together, leaving the top open like this. Mm -hmm. 
I then clip the corners and trim away the excess fabric and then turn them both right side out and use a knitting needle to poke out the corners nicely. I then top stitched the stitched edges to make sure the lining layer stays nicely in place. To finish the coat fronts and to actually attach the pocket flaps into place, I pin them onto the front yokes in between the notches and then baste the flaps into position. And then place the yokes onto the coat fronts, making sure the pocket flaps line nicely up with the pocket inset and then stitch them together like this. And I now have two coat front pieces that look like this. The front flap pockets are complete and they're looking so professional. I love them. But like my last coat, I want to add welt pockets to the front of this coat as well. Just like last time, I'm going to be using the pocket template of this Butterick pattern. So I've cut out a couple of these welt pocket flap pieces and then I will also attach the pocket pieces. You need both a lining and the main fabric to make a welt pocket and I'm going to make these welt pockets slightly on an angle so it's like really comfortable to just slide your hands on in there but yeah wish me luck with this because if it doesn't work I'm gonna have to do all of this again on some fresh fabric um but I think I know what I'm doing with it so fingers crossed it will work before I get started on these welt pockets let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video this video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and launch your passion project. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, write a blog, or simply create any website of any kind, you can do it all in just one place with Squarespace. Simply select one of their beautifully designed templates and then customize it to suit your brand and personal style. You can change everything from the complete layout of the website and add all the different bits and pieces you need to run your business, as well as all the fun things like the fonts and colors. I have been using Squarespace since 2016, but before that I had sold on a lot of different generic e-commerce sites and trust me when I tell you Squarespace is by far the best and nothing beats having your own custom website with your own unique URL. On Squarespace everything just looks so professional and so beautifully designed and it really helped to elevate the Rosary Apparel brand when I was first starting out. Not only that but it also made me feel like my brand was legitimate and therefore gave me the confidence to be really proud of what I was creating and share it with the world. So if you'd like to create a beautiful website of your own, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial, which I totally recommend you do so you can test out just how easy it is to create a website all by yourself. And then when you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. To make the welt pockets, I start by taking the welt flap piece, which basically is just a rectangle of fabric and stitch it in half with the wrong sides together. I then pin it onto the front of the coat where I feel it will be a comfortable position to just pop my hands on into the pocket and then pin the other one to the other side. This part took a little bit of measuring and double checking that they both lined up nicely. I then stitch them both in place like this. Next, I place the main fabric pocket along the raw edge of the flap making sure that the wrong sides of the fabric are facing up. I then place the lining pocket piece on top of the welt flap, matching and lining up the raw edge to the main fabric pocket raw edge. My lining didn't have a right or wrong side, but again, I think it's best if the wrong side of the fabric is facing up. 
Once all the pocket pieces are attached, I then fold the coat front piece in half and cut an opening in between the pocket pieces, stopping about an inch or so away from the pocket edges. I then cut towards the pocket corners like this. Next, I fold the main and lining pocket pieces into the opening I just cut. And then I also pop the welt flap through the opening as well, making sure the raw ends of the flap are positioned onto the inside of the coat. To finish the pocket, I then stitch all of the layers together on the inside and also stitch around the pocket pieces. And my beautiful welt pocket has been successfully stitched in place. The welt pockets are in place. They're looking very nice in there. Um, this one, for some reason, is curving a little bit there. And no matter what I do, I can't get it to go into a straight rectangle. But honestly, I don't think it matters. You're not going to tell that it's slightly curved. Um, but yeah, they're not too bad. I'm happy with them. And now I need to start working on the back of the coat um, and then I can attach the front to the back, uh, which I'm looking forward to doing because I want to kind of try it on and, and see how the length of the coat is looking. Once I detached the back yoke to the coat back, I was then able to stitch the fronts to the back along the shoulders like this. And once they were stitched in place, I was then able to finally try this coat on and see how the length was looking. It's going to definitely be quite a long coat, which is exactly what I wanted, but I was also aware that it would be hemmed slightly as well, so it wouldn't end up being quite as long as this. Now to make the sleeves. First things first, I folded the sleeves in half and stitched them together. I then attached them to the coat, matching all of the notches together. coming along so nicely. I am just obsessed with the texture and the color. I just think it's making such a beautiful coat. I'm also very happy with the length of it as well. Like it is proper trench coat length. I think I'm nearly about halfway. Uh, so I've obviously still got to put the lining in, um, but I think I'm just going to work on the collar now and then probably leave it for today. To make the collar, I stitched the collar back pieces together like this. And then stitched the collar front to the collar back. I then again used my knitting needle to poke out the corners nicely and then gave the collar a good press. And then I decided to top stitch the collar to make it look a little bit more professional and also a lot more nicely finished. Next, I pinned the now finished collar to the coat, matching the notches together to ensure that it was in the correct position. And then I stitched it in place. And then the last little bit that I did for the day was to just stitch the front lining onto the front of the coat. Yeah. 
And then according to the instructions, I was already halfway through the project, which I thought was a great place to stop for the day. Okay, so it is the next day now and I'm up to what is probably my favorite part of the whole coat making process and that is adding the lining. Adding the lining is just so satisfying to do and it makes the coat just look so professional and it's actually really easy to do as well. It looks super complicated and before I actually had a go at lining a coat I thought I would nowhere near have enough skills to be able to do it but it's just like magic. I don't know, it's just so easy and just makes the coat look so professional. Um, so I'm excited to get started on it. To add the lining, I started by pinning the back lining pieces to the front lining pieces at the shoulders and the sides. Then I got started on the lining for the sleeves, which again, I just folded the sleeve lining pieces in half and stitched them together. And then pinned and stitched them to the lining at the armholes. Next, I pin the lining to the collar neck edge of the coat and then stitched the lining in place. I ended up using my sewing clips for this part because the layers of the fabric were getting a little bit thick. It's definitely not even close to as thick as my last coat project I worked on, but still thick enough that it was a little bit tricky to work with in some places. I then stitched the raw edges of the sleeve and the sleeve lining together. And now the lining was nicely attached to the coat, which means I'm now up to the fun part of turning the coat right side out, which will result in all the raw edges being nicely hidden into the inside of the coat. Okay, so I've just had a bit of a read of the instructions because I could not for the life of me figure out how I was going to turn the coat right side out once the lining became attached to the bottom of the coat here. And it turns out back when I attached the back of the lining to the front, I was meant to have a little gap at the side so I could turn the coat right side out. But I completely missed that step. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of unpicking now and make a little gap in the side of the lining. So that way, once I've attached the lining to the bottom of the coat, I can then turn it right side out. But apart from that, it's coming together really well. Um, I'm excited to get to that step though, because that is when the magic happens. So I unpicked a small opening into the side of the lining and then stitched the bottom edge of the coat and lining together. And then finally, I was able to turn the coat and lining right side out. And then to make sure that the lining edges of the coat would sit nicely in place, I top stitched the front and bottom edges of the coat. Now I'm up to the last part, which is to just sew on the buttons. And normally I would just hand sew the buttons onto the coat, but I've actually been getting a lot of comments lately saying that you can sew the buttons on the machine, which 
absolutely terrifies me, but I've heard it is scary to start with, but once you learn it, it's like a game changer. So I'm actually going to give that a go today. Yeah, let's just see how we go. Hopefully I don't break the needle of my sewing machine. So to stitch the buttons in place with the sewing machine, I first had to stick the buttons onto the front of the coat with some ordinary sticky tape. I then set my machine to a zigzag stitch and changed the stitch length of the stitch to zero. Then using the hand wheel of the machine, I tested how long I needed the zigzag stitch to be to jump from one hole of the button to the other. And then once it was spaced out the correct amount, I used my presser foot to stitch a good 10 or so stitches to attach the button in place. The buttons I was using for my coat had four holes, so I just repeated this process for the remaining two holes of the button. And then once the tape was removed, I had a nicely attached button onto my coat. I was definitely surprised at how well this process worked. It definitely took me a while to get it set up correctly and at first I wasn't sure if it was going to be quicker than hand sewing or even worth the hassle, but who knows, maybe next time I have buttons to sew I'll end up using this method again. And lastly, I decided to also stitch a buttonhole and button onto the front flat pockets, but I did end up just stitching these buttons by hand. And with that done, my beautiful pink coat is complete. So, how does it look? This coat project was just as satisfying as the last one I did. Honestly, if you've never given coat making a go, I highly encourage you do because yes, it might seem a little bit intimidating and daunting. Honestly, it's a lot easier than you'd expect. And the results are just so fun. Like I've now got a beautifully lined coat that's exactly what I hoped for and it just feels so satisfying to say that I made this myself. So I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing me make my second coat in the space of like three months. Like always, if you did enjoy it, it would mean a lot to me if you could give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more sewing videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.